Greetings and uh, welcome to our lesson today. We are going to be looking at uh, module four. And we last time we looked at the cash receipts journal. So today we are going to look at cash payments journal. All right. So in this topic, we are going to look at the cash payments journal of a services business. We are also going to be looking at the formats and uses of the columns in the CPJ and the source documents used in a, to complete a CPJ and also entering cash payments in a CPJ and closing off the CPJ, right? So you will see that the spreadsheet of a CPJ, we're going to also look at it. So cash payments journal is a record of all payments made by check or any form of payment. It, this also includes funds paid via direct deposits to the bank or via electronic funds transfers, which is common these days, or by bank cards, any form of payments, which can also include even by cell phone banking, right? So any form of payment, usually when we account for them in the cash payments. So any form of payments will be recorded in the cash payments journal. Right, cash payment journal, we already know the purpose of it now. We see it from here that a cash payments journal, it's a journal which records all the payment transactions which the business has made, right, to buy or pay wages or any other form of transaction where money is paid out by the business, right? Information usually taken from source documents such as checks or counter for check counterfoils, bank statements, especially bank statements are we together right moving on right this is how a spreadsheet of a cash payment journal looks like so we have right here which is the number one the name of the subsidiary journal in this case it's a cash payment journal right and then number two we put the name of the business like here it is express it that is the name of the business. And then number three, we have here the month and year relating to the transaction. So like this transaction will be for October 2014, right? And then also we have the CPJ number one. So number four here, we will be having the general reference number, in this case, CPJ one. So CPJ meaning cash payments general, one referencing to the month which is the first or which is whatever the accounting month for that financial year of the company will be. And then we have here, right? So you can see we have, <coughs> so you can see we have here the document number where we put the source documents, the day on which the transaction occurred, the details will be put in here as to who, we are going to pay, right? So number five, there we put the number of the source document, right? Number six, that is the date when the, the payment was done. So it's not always the check, but it's a form of payment. Remember, we can have a electronic funds fund transfers, which is EFTs, so not necessarily only checks, right? We also have here now the details, the name of the person or business to whom the check is being paid or cash if it's cash by check or even just money by debit card. And then eight, this column folio will be where we put the folio number of the creditor involved, only used in grade nine. You will get it when you get to grade nine. And then number nine here, right? This is where the amount paid right this is usually the amount paid appears on the bank statement or the check or wherever the amount has been paid to usually it's in the bank statement which we use to do our transactions right and then stationary usually here we have the amounts paid for stationary where applicable that is if the, the business services business involves stationary so the to the amount will be placed in that particular column. And then we have here the wages column, right? If the amounts paid for wages 
where applicable again. And then we have got the sundry accounts. So these are columns for accounts other than those specifically listed in the columns in the in the CPJ. So if the any if the transaction is not part of the columns in the CPJ, you come and put that transaction under sundry account. So we will put there the amount of that sundry amount paid, and then we have the folio. This is usually the folio number of the account involved in the general ledger, which is entered after posting is a cross reference. So you will see when we get to posting that we'll be feeding in these folios. Right, and then 15 there, this is the relevant general ledger account, e.g. postage, telephone, or even bills, water and electricity, and any other transaction other than. So we put the details in there. And then 16, this is where we put the totals of all the amounts in each column, which will be posted to the general ledger. And then usually, now we put there, the folio numbers to the accounts where we have posted those amounts for reference purposes, right? Now, what, let's summarize what a CPJ is all about. So a CPJ, cash journals generally record all the daily cash transactions of businesses, right? the cash receipts journal and the cash payments journal, because these are the activities of business. You offer a service, you pay, you get paid, or you buy some raw material so that you can offer that service, right? And then cash payments journal, CPJ, records all the check transactions made by a business. There is a specific format for a CPJ for your services businesses, but it must always contain bank and sundry accounts. So every check payment or any pay form of payment is recorded in the CPJ using the check counterfoil, as the source document or also the balance sheet as the source document, right? And then when the total of the bank column in the, is the same as the totals of all the other columns in the, to the right of it, we say the CPJ is balanced, so, or balances. So if it does not balance, then we have to go and check where mistakes have been made. So CPJ is balanced at the end of every month. Now, Right, and then that is it. So you guys, let's now go in the next video. We're going to be looking at examples how the CPJ is filled. So we're going to move on to task 4.3. So watch the next video, please.